this show, episode number 324. I am your host, Norman Sanzu. Joining me today is the one and only Dan the Man, Anthony. How are you doing, man? What's up? I am alright. It is a Saturday night. I just walked past the mama where the football's going on. And uh, I know by the time this episode's out, the World Cup will be over. But damn, England's getting smashed. Wait, I thought England's out of the game. No, then th- there's a third place match tonight. Uh-huh. And they're being trashed again. Oh, oh that, that's just sad. I know we have some English listeners and... um. I kind of don't feel that bad for you guys because you guys were supposed to be good and you just, I don't know what happened. Something, something David Beckham, I don't know. Wait, he's still in the game? No, I mean, he's not, so that's why yeah. they're like, <laughs> you know, out the window. <laughs> alrighty then, alrighty then. And also joining us is Starstream. Hello, everypony. It's also been a Saturday night and I also do nothing. <laughs> how are you doing? Like, how have you guys been? It's been a while for uh, you, Dan. It's been... A hot minute with you, Star. But how have you guys been? Like, how? What was the updates? My updates has been just staying at home, do nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I ha- I just got back this week from uh, Sawadi Pony Con in Bangkok. Ah, how's that? It was um okay. The thing is that a lot of people are wondering about the attendance at Project C Pony Con last year. And Sawadi Pony Con was like the Thai pony convention for the Bronies, which was like people our age, and it was. Small. It was in this little hall in the in the Empire Tower. Really beautiful place, and it was it was fun because it felt like Pony Convention dot rar. It was compressed into a tiny hall, and uh, everyone was really close to each other and together. And it was it was really fun. The thing is, you know, I mean, uh, Starstream can relate to this. We didn't understand a word of what was going on in there because it's all in Thai. Yep. But you know, the good thing about being a brony is that this show, the characters are all still in English. You know, even when you you go to a, any convention in the world and there can be talking Swahili or Tagalog or whatever language you know. As soon as you share the Pinkie Pie, ah, yes, then you know they're talking about My Little Pony. So, yeah, you know, when it comes to playing games and stuff like, you know, we played this game where uh, Legacy, one of the artists, in fact, the artist who drew the poster for Project C PonyCon, he brought his Cintiq along and put it in the, at the host table. And he played a game where, you know, people come up and try and draw something You'll have to draw something to, and people will have to guess what pony it is, but you can't draw the pony, neither can you write its name. And it was pre- pretty fun to have this at a, in a convention setting. Nice. Sounds fun. Sounds fun. Talking about conventions, right? Um, I do remember that this week, or, well, technically when this episode comes out, it's going to be last week, but China BronyCon's happening, quote unquote, now. Now, yeah, right now. It looks great. I have some exclusive pics actually from uh, one of my people there, and it's a. Uh, it looks. It looks like a. It, it. You see, if you take the wrong angle at this event, the decoration makes it look like a wedding. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I'm serious. The decor is oh. really, really uh, spectacular in this. It is. The hall is amazing. It is so well lit. It is so bright, and I think it, it, this is a a grand scale event. There are at least a thousand people there. Is it at least three thousand people? I don't know because um you know everyone's busy right now with with the event. Yeah, here's the reason why I know this because uh I got the exclu- quote unquote exclusive from Andrea Lipman on her Instagram and yeah uh, uh she yes. went there with the whole thing uh she had a uh, interpreter or a guide named uh Phil Collins. <laughs> so yeah wait it's not Phil Collins really it's not that Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> I can go the distance. No, wait, no, that, that's not that's Michael Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, you have the same voice. I don't know. What is wrong with you, Disney? Do you only have one polarized voice in your head for inspirational music? <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, um, the guest for um, China BronyCon is Andrea Lipman and Tabitha St. Germain. So, yeah, you got Pinkie Pie and Rarity. So, that's awesome. And um, I'm not sure what to say, man. Like, I got no idea what to say because it's a Chinese convention in mainland China. So, have fun, I guess. I mean, they do have the stars there. So, yay. Go them. Yeah. But it's, I think she. it's also her first time visiting uh, Asia, right? No. Yeah, no idea. Hmm. But, anywho, anywho. Uh, let's get back on the track of news. So with news, um, season eight, it still is a thing. It's still going on. Well, technically it's under short hiatus. 
And guess what? Handbrake's still on. Yep, yep. Uh, guess what? Uh, you can release that handbrake on the 20th of July. And that's a Friday, folks. And it's rare to see an episode pop up on a Friday. It's like, hey, they leaked something out. Oh, no. But nah, man. It's something to do with the summer. And it's something to do with uh, the Discovery family summer surprise thingy. So, yay. That's great to hear. Yep. So, whoever's been following the season 8, um, the hiatus end next week. And one day earlier than expected. Yay! Much awesomeness. So, what do you guys think? Like, excited for the new release or no? <sighs> I need to catch up with MLP. Oh my. I'm, I am far behind on season 8. I need to catch up. It's cool, man. It's cool. I've... I mean, like, you know, I, I took a break to plan some stuff, especially the, there's a lot of stuff to do before uh, uh, Sawadee PonyCon. And then suddenly I know, what? Spike got wings? When did this happen? It happened in an episode in season eight. <laughs> exactly, you know? And I'm like, now I've been spoiled and I'm going to go back and start watching where I left off. And I'm like, the dude don't have wings, but EQD says he has wings. <laughs> That's a contradiction. <laughs> Objection. <laughs> My brain is going to start having this HTTP 500 errors. Like, what is going on? <laughs> what about you, Star? I have not watched one episode yet. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, but I do, I do watch, I do hear news about here and there. So, oh, no, it's not that bad, I guess. I, I'm guessing you don't have time then. Nope, not really. <laughs> what the hell are you up to? <laughs> you know what? Do nothing. I, I, that's a discussion for another day. And. <laughs> yeah. So let's head on to the next. An, a, day, a day when we have nothing to do, right? That's not happening. <laughs> oh no, we we do have days like those, but um, <clears throat> as for now, you have days like those. <laughs> <laughs> but as for now, let's head into the next news. So next news is a bit of a well, the quote unquote downer. But there's been this back and forth between MK Toon and the fandom, and it seems that well, um, a lot of people are not really enjoying uh, Starlight Glimmer because people say that, hey, it's, she, she's kind of a wasted character and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. And um, MK2 just said this. Well, that would be silly. Not all ponies are LGBTQ, just some of them. And with a season and a half left, I say that movement to get rid of one character out, what, 25, 35 characters? seem like energy that could be better used elsewhere. So yeah, a lot of people don't like the Shim Sham and want to get rid of her. I mean, that's just dumb. Like, why would you want to do that? I mean, wait, wait, wait. Are you sure it's Shim Sham or is it Glim Glam? Glim Glam. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, but um, I, I think we're missing the point here because uh, MK2 said that we have, what, <laughs> season and a half level? What? We need to play the X-Files theme behind this episode. So, <coughs> apparently... <laughs> We have, quote unquote, till season nine left for this. The sky is falling. <laughs> oh no, run! <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I'm not running anywhere. I'm gonna be here to the end of the world. Oh, uh, <laughs> be in a fetal po- be in a fetal position and suck your thumb and rock back and forth because yeah, nah, we're not gonna do that because, um, MK Tune here elaborate on what he had to say because. Um, you mean it's damage control? <laughs> uh, let's just say that. Yes, yeah. um, he said that. Uh, hey, it was really sorry to disappoint the rumor mill, but since I don't work at Hasbro anymore, I actually have no idea what their plans for the show are. What I should have said was, with a confirmed season and a half to go. Although I will add that if Hasbro does do more MLP FIM and I get to continue writing on it, I still think the fandom's time is better spent focusing on the characters you love and not the ones or one or two that you might not be faves. So yeah, it seems that according to MK Toon, it's... God has spoken, go in peace. Yeah, but it's from his point of view, but he's not working for Hasbro anymore because this could have been said with Larson when he was working on the show. That's it, she's dead. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no. Um, if you remember, uh, way back when, uh, Larson worked on the final episode for 
season three. And to him, that was the final episode before Hasbro said, yo, we wanted more episodes. And Megan had to rewrite a lot of that episode to make it work. You know, bring bring ponies back from the dead. <laughs> yeah. uh, so this could be... They need to call the cleaners. <laughs> no. Oh, but anywho, uh, maybe use Continental Sorry, coins. I, mar- I marathoned the blacklist this week to finish it because I walked past when my dad was watching and I was like... That's- Word? I've been spoiled for the rest of season five. I need to finish this <laughs> show. Uh, but anyway, um, getting back on track, like I was saying, um, from his point of view, it's a season and a half to go. But who knows? Maybe Hasbro wanted to finish off the season with a round number like ten. And come on, give us ten seasons of this. Even if the ten season is the thirteen episode, that would be at least how do I put this? A decade's worth of ponies, man. Like, give us ten. That's all I ask. Yeah, but I, I don't really get why they choose to end it on nine episodes. It's, it feels a bit weird. Probably it's called maybe. A <laughs> oh yeah, that, that is possibly true. Also, it's good. Or trigger everybody possibly. with OCD. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh yeah. God! Look, see this. This is my internal OCD talking because I wanted to finish on a nice round number, but no. See, I knew it. I knew it was all triggering <laughs> your OCD. <laughs> Because come on, like give us ten. At least ten is a good number. Because just imagine, we started this in um, 2010, and then we could have finished this on 2020. Man, it's like ten years of ponies. That would be awesome. <sighs> but no, 2019. So, let's just hope that Hasbro decides to continue on for another season. If they do, I mean, yeah, whatever it is, you know. Ah, then people will say they're jumping the shark. But you know what? Uh, that's for another story for another day. Ah, boys. So, we don't have many days left, Norman. <laughs> yeah, talking about... <laughs> oh, no. Talking about days left, right? San Diego Comic Con is going to be happening on August 13, 2018. Yeah, one mm. week before the anniversary of Project Seaponic Con. Yay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, San Diego Comic Con. Who of you guys here do not know of this place or do not know of this event? I do not know, and I know that I will never go- get to go there. <laughs> Wait, you do not know, or you do know? I know, but I, of course, it's hundred percent not gonna go yeah. there. I got better to things there. to do with my money. Oh man, like I yeah, I, that's that's true. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. For me personally, I wish I could have gone to the first Comic Con. Uh, okay, fine. You want to talk about wishful thinking? We wish we could go to every con on the planet. Oh yeah, true that. But no, I man, like the first Comic Con was dedicated to comics and Stan the Man Lee was there in his prime. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay, that 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 is that is very attractive. Yes, that is a very very But now Comic Con here is like what? It's a place It's like Comic Fiesta. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's like this place where video games, movies, TV shows, anime and so on if any of if any of the comic fiesta organizers are listening, this is my personal opinion. Do not go after Norman. You want to take it up with me? We can swear off in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No, I mean, co- I'm not going to talk about local cons. Yeah, I am protecting you, Norman. I'm not going to talk about local cons. <laughs> right? Local cons have their own thing. I'm not. Uh, whatever, whatever. Like local, local have cons. Their own thing. That's the problem with them. Yeah. Local cons. So anywho, um, with every comic con, we had. Um, exclusive pony merch and I remember the first time uh, ponies was quote unquote big in the uh, media was the first San Diego Comic Con Derpy exclusive you remember that one then? yeah I remember and then everybody rushed for that thing it was like I think there were a significant amount of bronies like me who don't care about Comic Con but when we saw that it was like oh no oh oops I accidentally bought a ticket yeah 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 and here's the thing um, I think the, the only reason why um, that pony sold out was because it was derpy. It was derpy and... The fan favorite. Yes, and that time derpy was, quote-unquote, uh, on a high rush. Like, everybody wanted her so bad. And, like, it was a mad rush. And then uh, we had others, and I don't really remember, except for that one um, Hot Topic. Not really Hot Topic. Um, What's that brand called? Give me a second. Um, vinyl Funko, yes. Vinyl uh, is that Funko vinyl, <laughs> uh, glittering. Um, what you call this? DJ Pone Tree figure. They had. Remember that one? Oh yeah, yes, that yeah. one. And they had it. Uh, they sold that in Singapore, 
at the uh, Absolute Comic or what? Was... SDGCC? No, no, no. Oh, oh no, yeah, 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 correct. Absolute Comics. Yeah. Yeah, they they sold it there, and I wasn't like, oh, no, 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 I don't want that one. No, no. So it's like, but then you know the the thing is that I remember that these things also had their so their little issues of what I remember to quote Bronyville falling off the back of a truck in China. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> right? they, because the um um derpy figure came out before San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing about it. Everyone was like, "I need to find it. I need to find it. Let's get on Alibaba. Let's get on all this Taobao Wang. Get on uh, Lazada. Whatever the heck, find it." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, we're we're jumping all over the place. I I don't know. I mean, it's it's fun to have you, man. It's fun to have you, Dan. <laughs> but anyway, um, a bit too much fun. <laughs> but this year, um, we have a new figure, and I do like the packaging here, and it's celebrating retroness, and it's My Little Pony, nineteen eighty three something, and the ponies are going way back because we got. No, 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 no. Calm down, Norman. They're not going way back. Because if they did, they'll just bring out G1 ponies again. Uh, well, technically, they did. That's 1983. Or, or, even, or even the G3. <laughs> that's, G, that's 1983. That's G1. So, yeah, they're yes. not going way back. They just had a little wardrobe malfunction. But no, not not a, not, they're not going back. No, right. no, no. We can't go back. I've seen the past. It's not pretty. <laughs> but still. Um, like, what, like what rarity say in the comics? The, the fashion go in the full circle. Yep, yep, yep. The grand circle. Yep. <laughs> But anywho, um, I mean, yeah, people dress up as hippie little. I don't know what hippies dress up as like these days. You know, I'm not even a good question, but I do want to state out that, um, you're gonna get some brushables in this box, and I have to say that the Rainbow Dash brushables here reminds me of the exclusive Toys R Us, um, Zakura brushable. Mm. Remember the one that? Oh, 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 yes, yes. Yeah, yes. you 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 bought it for me for a while. I I think it was part of an order we made. Uh, that was with Charlie. Yeah, we, we did like a huge order, and it was, oh man, yeah. that's when I got a first taste of what tax is. So I'm like, ah, yeah, what? Yeah, no, I am, a, I am a low middle, mid, I'm a lower middle class civilian. No, 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 you got the wrong guy. <laughs> uh, but still, but still, um, <laughs> uh, we have, uh, they have that like, um, all figures are there and they look fun and cute. But in all honesty, it's just. Um, the pony figure in cute accessories. And that's about it. And Rainbow Dash's hair or mane looks awesome. That's all. Packaging looks cool though. It's like a boombox. Yeah. It, no, it does look like boombox. So yes, yeah, that, that is the boombox yep. one. I was, I, was, I was referring to the second photo. I was looking at uh, that yeah. the whole time. But anywho, but anywho um, that's, that's it for this week. Um, news for this week was a bit, I, I want to say slow. We, we had four kind of maybe three news but we had fun we had fun so anywho and that's your report from the hiatus <laughs> yay uh, because um, next up here um, well talking about conventions right then um, last week when we did the podcast we were saying about this one convention that was happening in October or something like that yes 27 28 October uh, Project C Ponycon's coming back this year yes yay and you're the guy in charge right woo I've always been the guy in charge. I mean, since I was elected, which was years ago. But um, I'll go into that later. We're we're going to be back with a convention. We're calling it Fiesta Sea Pony Con, 27 to 28 October. And it will be at the City Beach Resort in Singapore. Nice. Sweet. Like That means it's very close to you, Norman. I and I expect to see you there. <laughs> but here's the thing. Um, Where's the City Beach? Because I've been Googling it. And what I've seen here is a bit of a confusion. So, okay. Uh, describe to us... Uh, for non-Singaporeans who've got no idea where this place is, um, describe to us where is this place and how easily accessible this place is. Okay, uh, first of all, like uh, most of the conventions that I've been involved in, you can go to our convention website. It's cponycon.com. There is a button on the top that says Getting There, and it will show you the directions on how to get there by most forms of transport. Uh, the, the good thing about Singapore is you technically don't need to own a car. You can get around very easily. So... The City Beach Resort is an interesting place in Singapore because Singapore is a city island. It's just hustle and bustle for almost every square mile of it. But this place is in the sorry southwest of Singapore. It is a resort. It's in a it's in the Labrador Nature Reserve. So it's in a it's surrounded by a lot of greenery. It's actually a place you won't expect to find in Singapore because a beach surrounded by it's not really a beach actually it's the, the ocean. 
seaside surrounded by greenery in Singapore of all places. Yeah, it's quite difficult to imagine because it's not a very typical Singapore site. People don't go to Singapore to go to the ocean and go to the seaside. But uh, yeah, we found a little place down there. And uh, I know some people who have found out where it is realize that it is difficult to access, much more difficult than the Thai Summit Tower from last year. And uh, here's the thing is that it's an open secret. Like I've explained back when I came on this show to talk about Sea Pony Coin, that this convention is a little strapped for cash. So this is the only place we could really afford. So please bear with us. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that you guys had a second one. We've always wanted to do another run. The thing is that it, it was a lot of paperwork in the way. You see, we looked through a lot of places again. And unlike last year when I had the freedom to travel a lot, I could go to different cities. I went to Manila, I went to Bangkok, and I went to Jakarta, uh, among other places. I wandered around, I, f I looked for places. But the thing is that this year I didn't have that freedom because we recently had our elections and I was in the, I'm in the media. So I was really busy with that. I had to do a lot of this through um, some of the people in our team, which I can't thank enough. They did a tremendous job of helping me scout venues and uh, also had to try and just make a lot of phone calls myself. So City Beach Resort, is uh, its closest station is the Labrador Park CC27 station. There is a bus stop outside, but I have no idea why there's no longer a bus that goes there. <laughs> okay. Uh, this yes, uh, the bus service that used to go there, which was uh, SBS Route 408, it's no longer in service. So I know some people would probably look up on Google and see, hey, there's a 408 bus that stops in front. No, unfortunately, it's not there anymore. Uh, this is also stated on our website. All right. So, okay, um, maybe it's a bit out of the way. So, okay, um, while doing some research on the Googles, I noticed that it was close by the shopping centers and also Universal Studios, the theme park and whatnot. So is it true or not? Because I'm a bit confused. It is It is quite close to the Universal Studios theme park because uh, Universal Studios is on Sentosa Island, which is an island south of Singapore, which is still part of Singapore. Now, uh, to do that, because Singapore built a bridge to this island, it's, it's still a separate landmass. But uh, the Labrador Nature Reserve and also the City Beach Resort is still on the mainland of Singapore. So you, if you look across the ocean, perhaps with a pair of binoculars, yeah, you can see uh, Universal Studios. All right. So basically, it's not that far, quote unquote far, but it's you have to take a bit of a walk. So, I mean, we all here do love walking, right? Come on. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a great place to walk because, you know, it's not the city streets. It's not somewhere that is polluted and... Uh, I mean, you know, Singapore is a concrete jungle. You can't run away from the fact that pollution is an issue in all concrete jungle cities. But this place, we, we chose the Green Lung, and this is surrounded by greenery. You can choose to walk the road, or the, the path will fork somewhere, and there's a little longer route you can through the jungle. Um, it's Don't worry, it's not, you know, National Park kind of level of jungle where, you know, you've got to walk on that beaten path mm -hmm. and risk the leeches and all that stuff. No, it's, it's pretty well laid out. Singapore takes good care of their public parks. Which, um, the irony of that is that it also caused a lot of paperwork to be involved if you want to use the public parks for anything. But that's besides the point. It's, um, it's quite easy to find. The road is really just walk and just keep walking until you see the sign uh, and you, you can't go wrong. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's not, we're not here. It's not going to be confusing. It's just a little long. It's a bit of a walk. Try to come early in the morning before the sun comes out and burns everybody. <laughs> Cause you know, our Southeast Asian trademark, hot, humid, hot, humid weather here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, City Beach Resort, it is a, well, quote-unquote hotel, right? Yes, it is a hotel. Ah, all right, then. So, basically, if I were to book a room there, I could just basically, well, wake up, eat breakfast, and then go, go to conventions. Cool? Yes. In fact, uh, the hotel bookings, I believe all the bookings of the hotel come with free breakfast, which is great because, the unfortunately, there are a few eateries around the area, so... Getting to a place to eat, if you're thinking of actually going into Sing Singapore town to eat, no, don't do that. You're going to waste a lot of time. And uh, I mean, you want to do that, it's fine, but you're going to miss out on the con if you mm, do so. True that, true that. I mean, as for now, we got no idea what's going on with the convention. And I'm guessing you're tight lip on what's going on, right? I uh, wouldn't be tight lip. In fact, that's what I'm here yeah. to do. I'm here to talk about All right, it. Then. So before I um, yes. open the floodgates, I'm just <laughs> going to say that um, I, I'm guessing that the hotel or the resort will have some food, but. Um, it will be pricey. Uh, I'm not 100 sure if you're going to do a deal with them for food. Who knows, man? Uh, not my place to say. 
Uh, no, because you know the thing is that when you enter into an agreement to a hotel to do food, you start you have to give them an exact number of people who are going to be there, and that's very difficult for us because we haven't started selling tickets. But uh, tickets will actually go on sale on the twenty first of July, which is at the time of recording of this episode will be the coming Saturday. Oh, cool, 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 cool. So you know what? Let's release the floodgates on what will be there at the con because I know that um. I'm going to be there, so I'm going to guess that there's going to be a podcast panel starring some jerk from this one brony podcast. I don't know what his name is. Yeah, you know, I'm actually going to Johor to throw this dude in my trunk and, and pull him all the way in, you know. Yeah, so oh, that's nice. I work hard for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay, the, the agenda of the convention is still not finalized, so I won't really go much into that, but... There are a few things about this convention that will I have to break it to you all. It's not going to be as grand as last year. But the reason is that this is the reason why we're calling it fiesta is that it's more of a party that we're going to get together and a chance to see each other again because unlike last year, last year our our goal was grandeur. We wanted to have a really spectacular big pony convention. This year we're going to give a fair warning that we may not secure a, we, we the chance of us securing a VA for this con is very slim due to our limited reserves. So we want to make that clear very very early that because you know I mean as much as we like to get as many people as we can to this convention we don't want to give anyone a false hope that you know you're you're going to get a chance to see a VA at this event because you know as much as we really want to and unless we can cut a deal in the limited time we have left before the con I don't really see it happening. So just fair warning to everyone. All right, all right. I understand, man. Like, I mean, okay, I personally understand because I'm a mature adult that understand how the world works. I'm not 100% sure about others, but I do hope that they act rational too. And yeah, VAs, they're awesome guys and gals. But sometimes when the schedule is, well, sudden, well, things don't go your way sometimes. But, you know, just because we have to scale it down, we're... We're not going to say, no, it's not a fun con. You're going to come here. You're going to waste your money. No, no, no. We, we, As much as we have to, we want to make sure that everybody's going to have a good time at this convention. And we're planning things. We we started, we got a lot of groundwork done, surprisingly, in uh, in the time that I actually went for a holiday. We actually went to Bangkok and then uh, subsequently went down south to Rayong. And we got to know some of the activities that would really be fun at a convention that would be smaller. So we, we actually have a big shout out to make to... Uh, Tawadi Pony Con because it was a good inspiration for us to work out how we're going to do this convention because I'll be very honest I went into this a little blind on um, what to do but I really knew that people wanted to meet again and we are as you as you said you know this leak now is out and it just shows that the you know even though it may may not be completely true the end is on the horizon see in 2015 we experienced the the peak of this fandom where we had 42 pony conventions, a pony convention once every nine days in the year, if you count that way. It was really maximum pony convention year. It was, we had pony conventions all the way in the UK, in Czech Republic, Ludwigsburg, Germany, all over the US, in Malaysia, Thailand, and Singapore. So it was pretty much one of the, uh, the best years for pony conventions. When you're in 2017, two years later, that number was sliced by half to 23. And then now, we're in 2018, where the number is yet again sliced in half to, almost by half to just 14 conventions, with two of them that haven't even fully confirmed their date and venue. Oh, man. So, that is, uh, excuse Ooh. me. That's quite brutal. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's, sorry, I have to correct that. That's 12, because um, one of the conventions listed for 2018 is PonyCon AU, and PonyCon AU has officially folded. So, therefore, yeah, we're actually looking at a very low convention count so you know this number is going to continue to dwindle and we want to make the best of this time because you know give it you know, people say maybe 10 years time i have a pony convention there's only going to be like 10 people there so we got to make sure we got to make the best of what we have right now true that true that i mean even with brony con with how they say that 2020 is going to be uh not really their last but their last team pony convention if i remember right and it is, if I'm not mistaken, their last uh, convention in Baltimore because uh, I don't think the Baltimore Convention Center's agreement with them lasts beyond 2020. But they did say that they want to continue doing conventions after that. We'll see what happens. Uh, I can't confirm or 
completely, you know, deny all the, the information. But that's what I remember hearing a while back. Mm, true, that, true. That. And I also heard that um, when Bruni comes around, the business around the area kind of booms up a bit. Oh yeah, I mean, we've been there. We've seen this with our eyes. It's just the pubs, the the restaurants, the the newsstands, even the Seven Eleven is full. It's chock full. Mm. There's just brownies everywhere. You can find a person with a pony shirt in every outlet, even CVS Pharmacy or anything around the area is just full of brownies. And it's it's an experience that we were hoping to achieve at C PonyCon, Project C PonyCon last year. Unfortunately, we fell a little short on the expected attendance. So that kind of resulted in our misbudgeting, if you want to put it that way. Yeah, a lot of people say that we don't know how to budget. We are a poor event organization. We'll agree with that. We aren't the best event organizers in the world. We make a lot of mistakes, but that's not what we are here for. We're not here to make money out of events. We're here to organize events where people have a good time and enjoy. A lot of us put money that we're not, where we understand we may never see again into these kind of projects. Call it stupid if you may, but that's just how we work. Well, it says that you guys are willing to live and learn and take it one step at a time. And it's, well, here's the thing. Money, even though we don't like it, it's very important that we have money so we can, well, quote-unquote, um, live because bills need to be paid, products need to be bought. So yes, um, money is kind of the, well, yeah, not the fun thing to... And in certain cases of conventions, people need to get intoxicated. Uh, I'm not gonna, no, uh, I'm not yes. gonna say anything about that, man. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. Yeah, but still, um, the fact of the matter is, I I will try to go to this convention, and sorry, that, that is a bad word to say. Try, no, I will go to this convention, and I'll give it my full support whenever, however I can. And you know what? Uh, let's see if the dates are right. Probably I'll can force a certain hippogriff to appear on the panel or something like that. I mean, that's a big if it does happen. But hey, uh, if the hippogriff says yes, why not, right? Of course. I mean, the more the merrier. But we also have to say that uh, as we open ticket sales this year, this is going to be a challenge for us. <clears throat> the reason is because this is the first time we're organizing an event that has a ticket cap. Oh. Meaning that we can actually only sell a hundred tickets to this event due to an agreement with our venue. Now, based on our uh, attendance in 2017, which was 160, including invited guests, volunteers, and staff, mm. I believe a hundred because you know we're scaling down, and when we scale down, we have to expect a little less. And of course, Singapore is an expensive country. I'm, you know, we, we apologize for people who do feel that way. We feel that way too. Singapore is expensive, <laughs> yes, but. We also have a lot of contacts in Singapore as well who can help us out with this event. And uh, yeah, we can understand if a lot of people can't make it. Don't give up though, because if you can secure a ticket by purchasing it this coming weekend, since the episode will be aired on Tuesday, yeah, we, we hope to see you there. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm going to be there because, well, like I mentioned before, I know this one guy who does a podcast. is kind of the longest running brony podcast in the world, as far as I know. Yeah, go go to the go to the mirror and say hi. Yeah, I, I'll go do that later. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm going to drag his ass down there. So yeah, uh, that's going to be there. And then probably some of you, my friends, going to be there. I mean, uh, Star, you're going to be there, right? I'm not sure yet, but I can try to go the, there. The current situation that you're in, yes, I remember that now. Star stream. I know people in places. You better <laughs> be there. <laughs> well, yeah, man. I I'm, I'll try my best to. Tr- Try and go there if if can. Someone needs to destroy my Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, but still, but still, yes. Um, like I mentioned before, um, we'll be there. Going to have a lot of fun there. You know what? I'm gonna let in on a little secret for you guys because um, on mm. the Monday, you know, on the 29th, it's me birthday. Ooh, okay. So yay! That's okay, nice. yeah. So it's good. I'm gonna put that in the notes <laughs> of the event. Uh-huh, so it's gonna uh-huh. be one of those situations where oh, party all weekend and on my birthday is got nothing. Everybody's going home. <laughs> now, right there, then does the does the resort have a pool? Um, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh my! I, mm-hmm. Me iPhones. <laughs> me iPhones. No. <laughs> hey, iPhones are no, they're now. not. I mean, if you got the latest one, <laughs> you got the latest no, one. No, <laughs> they are not. <laughs> Uh, boys. <clears throat> so anywho, um, yes, I- I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna have fun. Um, mostly I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna dip around rather than do a lot of work. I mean, uh, last 
years convention, uh, Sai Thai um Sea Con Thailand. I did a lot of work. Did a, we call it Project Sea Con. Yes, yeah. Project Sea Con. I did a lot of work. Um, interviewed Michelle Krieber. It, it was a lot of fun. I, honestly, I had a lot of fun there. But the stress of going from point A to point B was stressful. So this year, I'm hoping that I can relax, do you know, just walk around, see vendor booths. Are they going to be vendor booths? We are looking into that. Yes. All right. So we're going to look at vendor booths. Make sure they have this credit card thing that they can use. If not, I'm not going to buy anything. <laughs> but anywho, anywho, we're we're running off topic. So then, um, anything more to add to this wonderful convention? Yes. Yes, I do. And in fact. Uh, if you're free, this is uh, I'm I'm actually talking about it for the first time here, but it won't be the first time anymore on Tuesday. So never mind. Um, yeah, for those of you who have any questions, I know tickets are opening on the twenty first of July. Um, for those of you who have any questions, want to find out more, or actually want to know more about the story of this convention, where it all began, how we actually came from a Facebook group to a convention. Come to the Shah Alam Convention Center on sun- on Saturday, twenty first at two p.m. We have a special interest panel called Project Sea Ponycon's birthday party. We are celebrating, uh, and it's not exactly our birthday because you know we can't force birthdays to fall on weekends. But we're celebrating the anniversary of the day the word Sea Ponycon first appeared on the internet, and it's going to be a long ride through. Uh, not really a long ride. We're not that old, but a ride through history. A right through how we, you know, almost had this convention in another country altogether, and you'll figure out a few interesting things about us. So, if you can be there on the twenty-first of July, Saturday afternoon, two p.m. Shah Alam Convention Center, you'll need to buy a ticket for Vax, uh, the Visual Arts Expo, Vax Asia. You can go to their website, Vax Asia, to buy a ticket. Uh, unfortunately, no, you know, just because hey, Daniel's friend let me in. I'm not organizing the con. I'm just organizing the panel. I remember Vex. Vex is kind of a big shot deal thingy. <laughs> Vex is an interesting convention. It's supposed to be more, um, you know, to the, open. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be more towards general fandoms and uh, f- fandom and art. But, you know, last year they went, you know, full Yuri on ice. So I don't know what the heck happened. <laughs> um, they seem to be a little more grounded this year. So I'm looking forward to it. Um. Shalom Convention Center is a little difficult to access by rail, but there are buses that can get you there. It's very near the state secretariat. So, um, yeah, Waze usually asks you to drive through government property to get there. So <laughs> try Google Maps, please. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, Waze need to reset itself. <laughs> so, yeah, um, if you guys are interested in hearing the history of Sea uh, Pony Con, head there. Even if you're not, just come. Yeah, head there. I mean, I remember a friend of mine who hosted a panel. Uh, he had a panel about this, what you call this, um, Japanese idol thing, like their supporters or something like that. Ah, yes, yes. They have they have a lot of these groups. Um, that, that con has amazing panels. Like, usually you go to big conventions, you see dead serious panels, like how to draw eyes and make sure that you, you make sure that when you flip your canvas, the eye looks perfect <laughs> or something like that. I don't know, but... You know, you go to Vax, you see panels like why X is worst waifu <laughs> or your, why your waifu sucks or things. I'm serious. There are panels with these kind of names at previous conventions. <laughs> oh my god, that should be fun. <laughs> Alrighty then. So I mean, yeah, I mean, Vax is a fun place. Come join us, and uh, it's this is gonna be less of a panel, more of a party, more of a little get together because. Uh, we want to give thanks to the community that put that helped us become who we are. And one of the ways we thought about it is, hey, you know, we originally thought about doing this at the convention itself. But how do you say this event happened to be closer to the actual anniversary of the first time the, the word Sea Pony Con was ever mentioned. So we're doing it there instead. All right. All right. It should be fun. I hope it will be, and we don't get thrown out of Shala. Oh, man, come on. <laughs> but you, you guys are going to be rocking it, and then they're going to come... Uh, and ask you to do another one next year and like yeah we're good friends with the organizers of VAX so yeah I'll be like uh, when's next year's one? Oh, it's coming next year definitely gonna be one like yeah you guys have money <laughs> uh, but anywho <laughs> thanks thanks man uh, thanks then for coming on and talking about the con like I seriously can't wait because in my head right now I have a um, panel topic that I really want to try and do 
And who knows? Mm-hmm. Maybe if I can get the pigeon on, uh, it'll be fun. But time zones. I mean, uh, everyone says I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm like, no, guys, please wait. <laughs> please let it drag on a bit more. We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> no, man, I can't wait. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe you know we're 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 doing this because the fandom is coming to an end. Don't accelerate <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, but, but anywho, but anywho, thank you, man. It, mm-hmm. it was it was no fun problem. getting to know more info about this. And yes, uh, I think my booking of certain places should be done ASAP. Then yes. Oh yes, yes. I should mention as well since you actually talked about that. Um, okay, the thing about City Beach Resort is that it's a rather boutique Ooh. hotel. So therefore, the I also noticed, and I actually spoke to them about this. They're not listed on most of, like places like Booking dot com or uh, Expedia. They're not actually listed there. But we are negotiating some uh, hotel booking deals. The hotel's official rates are one hundred and forty dollars, and this Singapore dollars, by the way, not U.S. dollars. One hundred forty dollars per room per night for the twin room, which has two beds, and uh, two hundred Singapore dollars for per room per night for the quad sharing room with four beds. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's either two beds or a big bed, it's a double bed or two double beds kind of thing. I'm sure that the hotel can kind of arrange this. Um, I'll need to speak to them a little bit more about that. But uh, I know the room capacity is this much, and I know that everyone will be on the floor by the night. So I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Trotcon. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is um, this is the current rate that the hotel offers. But uh, we are currently negotiating with the hotel to give us a better rate since we are having an event there. And eventually, when you go to the tickets website, which will be tickets.cponycon.com, you will be able to see that uh, we have ticket packages for that include a stay at well. Now, currently at this point of time, this is subject to change, but I'll speak about it here. We will have uh, the basic package to put people to have a room for the night. So that will come with a one night stay plus two tickets for the to a twin room. And a one night stay plus four tickets for the quad sharing room. Upon now, when you want when you buy these tickets, you can then choose to add Friday night or Sunday night or both to the ticket that to in, if you want to extend your stay. As for right now, we don't have an option to add Thursday night just yet, but uh, we will look into that if enough people want it. We may because you know this is going to be a smaller event with a hundred uh, attendee cap. We might actually. Uh, just message you and just lie with the hotel directly to get this booked. All right, that's cool. So at least if I do want to book a hotel there, I you know, get a discount. Why not, right? It'd be probably discounted based on uh, the rates I just told you. It includes your convention ticket when you book this. However, um, for panelists like you, I'll get in touch with you directly about the room because you know, as a panelist, you, of course, would get free admission to the Yay, convention. It wouldn't I be do fair work. to dump you all and just like, <laughs> it's like you have a, it's, I'm a panelist. Where's your pass? Oh, oh wow! Oh wow! Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna talk about that one. Anyhow, uh, yes, <laughs> I'm just thinking about that one con. We should not talk about it. So anyway, um, yes, um, anywho. <laughs> Uh, no, Norman, we will talk about yes. it after this because there's something oh that came up. So, anywho, um, yes, uh, can't wait. Uh, like Dan mentioned, if you are looking to stay at the City Beach Resort, um, do go through ticket.cponycon, was it? Tickets.cponycon.com. Yes, ticket.cponycon.com. Uh, you get the con ticket and also probably room at the unspecified rate price oh you're, you're talking about it like it's a lottery like you get a ticket and probably a room like it's like oh I mean, you got, you want a free state no 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 such thing guys just to make sure <laughs> maybe people don't want a room maybe people just want a uh ho- a ticket to the con oh maybe people just want a hotel ticket <laughs> i don't know uh, but you know what anywho i'm babbling right now and this show is going on for long enough so anyway if you have any <laughs> questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can do so at then be sure gmail.com if you would like to reach us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at me show my personal twitter account is at norman sanzo and dan where can they find you you can follow cponycon at cponycon on twitter instagram and facebook as well facebook.com forward slash inst- uh what the hell <laughs> facebook.com forward slash instagram <laughs> facebook.com forward slash cponycon um you can find me on twitter i'm saying pinky s-t-p-i-n-k-i-e Follow me. I tweet about random crap and my job. And there's a few other places that you can also follow up on things to do with the convention. For instance, if you haven't heard it already, we released a new theme song for this year called Unbox Singapura. 
which is, to our knowledge, the first MLP-inspired song that was written in both English and Bahasa Malaysia. Star, where can the good people find you? People can find me on my DeviantArt, AngelicorXX, or my Twitter. That is also the same. Alrighty then. And if you want to find out more about the convention, ask questions, or if you're going alone, but you still want a place to stay, uh, discuss it among friends for room sharing on our Discord server, discord.cponycon.com. Of course, we encourage this, but if, uh, you know, we're not responsible, if things go wrong, you're still responsible for yourself, you know, just a little disclaimer right there, because our generation. True, 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 true. Just be safe, guys, when you want to go travel. Make sure you go with the people you trust. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch it radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvlive.com. Links will be in the show notes. And also, please do subscribe to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and also Stitcher Radio. Over there, you catch me and Silver Quill talking about the pony episodes, comics, and movies. And sometimes we like to talk about other things. And... From what I remember, the other things that we like to talk about was the miracle ladybug. It seems to be a pattern with us. Um, you know what? I'm going to change that pattern soon enough. The what? Uh, it's a show called The Miracle Ladybug. It stars this um, French girl who is a superhero that transforms into a mask hero ladybug kind of thing. And her partner in crime, uh, Cat Noir, who's this uh, young, beautiful man of a person <laughs> who dresses up in black latex you know what it's a show you have to watch for yourself me describing it does no justice it sounds like a big mash chap of everything <laughs> yep it's so confusing that it almost broke silver quill almost is the key word here I am trying to break him <laughs> so hey you might break Netflix it's also on Netflix by the way if you have Netflix go go check it out <laughs> So, anywho, uh, where was I? Yes, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Dr. Cat, Starstream, myself, Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you guys, you have been really great to me. I, I, I am so humbled. Thank you so much. So, anywho, I have been Norman Senzo. I'm Daniel Anthony. And this is Starstream. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode in the airship. See ya. Bye-bye. Yeah.